Hello and welcome to the Ecom Sales Tax Podcast. My name is Ryan Johnson, and today I get to greet Dan Peisner once again with us. Dan, how's it going? It's going well, Ryan. Thanks for having me again. It's always a pleasure. So, how's the weather treating you in Texas nowadays? Oh, uh, the weather is uh, the weather is like sales tax for many people. <laughs> Raining and dreary outside. <laughs> Raining and dreary. But sometimes that could be a, a welcome reprieve from the summer heat in Texas. True, true. Uh, I don't know of anybody that, that finds sales tax to be a welcome reprieve from anything, but there, it takes all kinds, yes. Yes. Some people get excited about sales tax, Dan. True. Some people, like us, get excited about the complicated cases. Yeah, that is true. Um, I did want to bring up Something that's been going around, and I mentioned this in our chat before, is amongst all the sales tax influencers um, on LinkedIn or social media, and uh, something that Washington just released, and they released a temporary, not sure why they used the word temporary, extension of their VDA program. Um, and I kind of wanted, wanted you to talk about that since you know that's what you're in uh, day in and day out and get your take on whether or not that's a, it's a good program and who can benefit from it and who doesn't. Oh, certainly, Ryan. So I, I think the reason that they put the, the word temporary in there is, is the, the state's trying to build some buzz and they're, uh, they're, they've kind of got a twofold uh, approach here. The first is that they are trying to help a lot of companies that, that are struggling with COVID related expenses and fall offs in revenue and, and the, this, the department is, is ostensibly trying to reach out a little bit to that. And the, the other reason is that you see this is the same thing that we see time and time again. And that is when, whenever the states start hitting revenue issues and they, they start falling on hard times, one of the things that they like to pull out of the old playbook is to do some kind of an expanded VDA program or an amnesty program, something to kind of get some, create some buzz and some excitement and get some, some additional revenue in as well as some new taxpayers. And uh, so that I feel like that's probably the reason that you see this, this program uh, in a temporary form being brought up uh, by making it temporary. It does create some, some urgency to get people to, to jump on the program and sign up and, and get through it. But, uh, I guess to your next point as to whether whether it is a, a benefit uh, or, or who it can benefit, uh, I think that that's the answer to that's a little complicated. So the the expanded criteria is not it, it definitely has some pitfalls in it. So when you think about a, a voluntary disclosure normally, it's the, the state requires that that the business has never been contacted by the department. Uh, that they've ne that they've never been contacted, they've never been registered before, they've never reported tax before, and that they haven't engaged in in uh, evasion or misrepresentation. So those are the, the normal criteria. Under the expanded criteria, whereas before you had to you could never have been registered or reported taxes to the department, they will now say that businesses that close their tax registration prior to January first of twenty twenty can can enter into voluntary disclosure. And this includes businesses that previously filed. In addition, they will also allow businesses that were put on active non-reporting status, which simply means these are small businesses that that uh, for whatever reason, they, they may not have had taxable products and didn't have enough B&O to report that they were recognized as active, but they, they didn't have to file a report. And if you, if your revenues picked up or you change your product mix and never change that, you could have some liability. And, and so those are those, those types of taxpayers could be covered under this. If you, uh, and, and to me that, that first one with the tax registration prior to Jan of 20, to me, that speaks to taxpayers that that uh, exited the state and lost their physical presence prior to Wayfair and then Wayfair came along they may have triggered Nexus and they just never they never got around to re-registering so those, those could be kind of the, the taxpayers that Washington's looking to scoop up with this 
the second round of criteria is a little more complicated. When they talk about normally you can never have been contacted by the department for enforcement purposes, they're saying that if you're if the most recent enforcement contact was prior to July of 2019. So if the enforcement has talked to you on or after July 1st of 19, you'd be disqualified. And any businesses that have ever been contacted by the department regarding Wayfair, the Marketplace Fairness Program, or remote seller relief would not qualify. So if enforcement contacted you for some reason and dropped off the face of the earth prior to July of 19, then you you can enter into a VDA as long as the as long as the words Wayfair, Marketplace Fairness, or Remote Seller never came up in the conversation. And the other the other area is businesses that have not been named as an affiliate of another business through an enforcement contact. And what that simply means is that when enforcement when enforcement finds you, they typically will <clears throat> or if you, when you enter into a voluntary disclosure, they typically ask about all your affiliated entities. And so if, typically if one, if one of your related businesses gets contacted, all of them are considered to be contacted. So the way that this is worded, it looks like it's possible, and I have not confirmed this with the department, but if one of your entities gets contacted for enforcement, that until these others are named, that you might not you might be able to squeeze in and get a VDA. So hmm. it's, it, it could be a, a race to the mailbox in some instances, but I, that's something given the way that this is worded. If you find yourself in that situation, I would anonymously talk to the, talk to the state or contact a helpful consultant to, to, re, to reach out and find out about this because it could, it looks like there's some room to negotiate on that. Uh, and then if there's any kind of evade, the tax evasion or misrepresentation in, in reporting tax liabilities, that has not changed. Uh, you can't, you, they're not letting you off if you, if you were committing fraud. One important note is that this, this does not extend to tax collected, not remitted. Uh, if you have, if you do have tax collected, not remitted, they, they will have an unlimited look back to when you collected the tax. And there is a 29% late payment penalty that they they do apply. They do not waive that for tax collected, not remitted. Yeah, don't do that. Um, so to be clear, this does not benefit those you know that were contacted about Wayfair. Correct. Correct. If the the state had a number of campaigns around Wayfair around when their marketplace fairness program came out where they contacted everybody that they had on a list, every, anybody they had on their lists and said, hey, we got this program, you're eligible. If you got contacted about participating in those programs, they're not gonna give you a VDA according to these criteria. So I'm gonna ask this question. It may seem like a, a dumb question to you, Dan, but this may be a, a serious question someone has, okay. maybe it, it, even me. Does this does this mean they have VDA programs? Does this mean they only you can only do a VDA at certain times that they have these VDA programs? Is that the only time you can ha get a VDA? Well, it, the VDA program is always going on. So under the normal criteria, if if you've never been if the state doesn't know you exist, if you've never been contacted you've never been registered, that criteria, those VDAs are always open. Uh, that, those programs are always around because there's always, there's always new companies out there. They're, there's, they're always happy to have a taxpayer they don't have to find. They're, they're happy when new taxpayers come to them. The, these expanded criteria uh, for this temporary program, this is only available through, from now through November 30th. So, you, you've got uh, roughly, roughly about four months to uh, to apply and get through the program. And now there's and there's a few other de deadlines once you apply, and it has to be through their online application. But one, assuming you meet the criteria and you and you uh, you you have to apply by November 30th, and 
meet a couple of other deadlines, but, but assuming that you do that, you can qualify under the expanded criteria. Otherwise, if you, if you still meet normal criteria, then you can VDA whenever. Okay, yeah. Um, also, kind of what's the process of finding out that you do, that you should get a VDA done? Well, typically, well, the, the process for finding a, out about a VDA or to determine if you need a VDA is uh, you would look at your, you would, you'd want to take a look at your, your physical nexus, provide your identifiers. You would want to look at your economic nexus identifiers. Uh, you would want to determine, you want to determine, did you have nexus in the state of Washington? When did you have nexus? How much liability do you have in, with the state? And is it, and would a, a voluntary disclosure make sense? One thing that we, we always advise our clients is Washington has relatively low interest rates, but if they find you, their penalty rates are rank among the highest of the states. Uh, they, they get, if, if they find an unregistered taxpayer, the penalties can get into the 40% the range pretty fast. So they, if you've got any liability at all with Washington, we highly recommend looking into voluntary disclosure. Um, you've participated in a lot of our what's next calls. How much of that do we cover in a what's next call? Uh, we, we cover, we can cover uh, depending on level of specificity. We can, we cover a lot of that. We can cover the, the general elements. I mean, there, there's some things uh, for example, if you've had, if you've been in the, if you had salesmen going into the state for years, then uh, that, that the next bit's pretty, pretty easy, but we, we, will, we try to walk you through uh, all of those factors I mentioned. And then uh, if, and we'll, we also look beyond Washington. So we're going to look at, at uh, just about every state and try to figure out if you, uh, in a lot of cases, if you're going to need a kind of a formal analysis to really do a deep dive, determine where you're, not only where you're, uh, not only where you have nexus, but where you have that exposure, look at the taxability. Uh, if, if, you've got ex if you've got nexus, but your product's not even taxable in the state, then obviously a VDA may not be needed. And then also looking at the, if you, once you have exposure, looking at, at uh, next steps. Uh, is, does a VDA make sense? Do you want to just it just make more sense just to pay the back taxes and, and we can kind of walk through all of that. It's pretty extensive. Um, and I want to point out that these, these calls are free uh, and you can sign up at any time. Uh, you can find a link to sign up for your and schedule your what's next call. Um, and you may get on the phone with Dan and get all your questions answered. Um, all right, Dan. Um, was there anything else you wanted to add? I've got no more questions for you. Um, just wanted to thank you so much for being on with us today. Oh, it's my pleasure. Uh, I don't really, I think that pretty well covers the, the Washington VDA program. Um, the, the only thing to add is Washington in the past has been a very aggressive state. Uh, I don't, as of, and uh, as of late, I, uh, they're, like all the other states, their tax revenues are going to be hurting, particularly their, because they are so reliant on their sales tax. So uh, it, is, it is very possible that we can start seeing enforcement ramping up. So if you, if you do qualify for this program, uh, I do urge you to give it serious consideration. All right. Thanks again, Dan. And we hope to see you guys on another one.